Every other marketing guru out there tells you to build a list, yet you're probably having a hard time building it and coming up with emails your subscribers are literally waiting to read. And even if you do, you're probably having a hard time making any money with your emails, right? Well, we're going to change that. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to ethically steal the world's best email funnels from your favorite marketing gurus. They have spent tons of time, energy and money into testing their emails, optimizing for open rates, with awesome subject lines, openers, pre-headers and awesome CTAs. Now, if you don't know what these terms mean, don't worry, I'll explain it in this video as well. But the way we are going to steal those email funnels is using AI and a simple automation. And no, we're not going to simply copy them. Instead, we will completely rewrite them and make them your own using nothing but AI. After watching this video, you will literally go and run to subscribe to all your favorite gurus newsletters because it will help you create a high converting email funnel with ease. So by the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly how to build it and steal your favorite gurus email funnels, right? I've got my music going, so I'm, I'm pumped. And I'm going to make this a bit more raw than usual. So let me know in the comments if you, if you like that or not. I'm not going to edit it too much. So, but before we jump into building the automation, we need to get the basics right, right? So we are going to steal your competitors' email funnels ethically with AI, okay? So first of all, we need to understand why is it so important to have an email list, right? Um, we're in this new digital economy and I just want you to imagine for a moment that you're at a party right? And you've got two groups of people to chat with. One group is, well, your email list in this case, and they are like your close friends, right? You know them, they're into what you're saying, and you can hit them up at any time. The other group is your social media followers, right? They are more like party guests, let's say. They're cool, but they might not always be listening, and you can't control when they come and go. Okay, so... Your email list is your direct line to people who really want to hear from you without any middleman. That's gold in the world of digital marketing, right? So you have all these platforms. You have social media like Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube, all that stuff, right? But they have flaws, right? Um, they're awesome for distribution, right? Don't get me wrong. But what happens if, and it happened many times before, right? What happens if Instagram decides to delete your account. They're going to cut you off from your audience, right? After years of building it, they simply decide, well, I didn't like, they didn't like your post, so they decided to delete your account. There's not much you can do about it, right? What happens if um, YouTube just deactivates your account or deactivates your monetization or decides that, well, what about the algorithm changing, right? They can decide at any point in time to change how the algorithm is working and simply, simply tell you, well, your next videos are not going to be distributed as well as those before that. And you need to figure out how the algorithm works or come up with better valuable content in order to have it distributed to your audience. It's a mess, right? Um, it's, it's annoying. It's, it's really helpful to get distribution, right? But um, you want to have that direct line to your audience, which in our case is the email list, okay? You can simply go ahead and create a list and it's your own, right? Um, you own that audience. It's not a borrowed audience from any platform because you can actually export all your email addresses you have in your list and put them in whatever software you want to use, right? So um, I've linked to an article uh, e explaining that further, that concept of owned versus borrowed audience because it's really important to understand. And if you could, don't get that, well, I can understand why you're not motivated to build your, build your list, right? But that's what everyone is telling you. So make sure to do it. Um, like Alex Hormozzi is always saying, right? Given public, 
sell in private. In private. I love that concept and um, it's the way to go in today's day and age because attention is limited, right? You want to educate and entertain in public, you want to sell in private. So creators often educate in public and sell in private for strategic reasons. By sharing knowledge and insights openly, you build credibility and establish yourself as an expert in your field. That's what you want to do, right? So this public education creates trust and a sense of community among your potential customers. And I'm saying potential customers um, with intention, right? So let's have a look. If we, we have this, you need to understand the customer journey basically, right? So this is for a service offer example. We always start with traffic, right? And I'm gonna take these headphones off because they distract me a bit. So we want to start with the traffic, right? Um, you need to get that right. Traffic is gonna be built by using social media. You can use ads for it. You can go to in-person events and like funnel them into your landing pages and stuff, but you always need traffic. So nail that first, right? Next, we need leads. Why do we need leads? Because we want to build a list, right? So in order to get leads, usually what we do, we tell our audience, well, We've got a newsletter. Not many people are going to sign up if you have a newsletter just because you have a newsletter, right? So what you want to do is you want to use a lead magnet, right? Something of value for your audience to consume. This could be something like, um, I am actually going to share this exact document with you after watching this video, right? So um, that's a lead magnet. You can sign up and download it for free if you want to you will actually also get the exact template for the automation um, only if you sign up, right? So I get your email address in exchange for, for the lead magnet, which is a nice trade, win-win um, for everyone, right? So I have your email, um, you have my lead magnet, and that's how you build your email list, basically, right? It's, it's simple, don't overcomplicate it. So if you're offering a service, for example, um, you don't want to pitch your, your paid product to your traffic source, right? So I'm not going to go ahead and um, in this video tell you that I actually have a service offering because it's not the place to do that, right? It feels weird. Um, and many people don't like that to be not many people like to be sold, right? Um, especially not in, not in public. So make sure to, to do the selling in private. And we do that by collecting leads, building our list, and then selling through email, DMs, and so on, right? So you got your leads, you send them emails, um, which hopefully leads to booking an appointment with you, right? If, you, if you're providing a service, for example, high ticket, something like that, um, then you, and all of those things you want to measure, basically, right? Um, so you want to measure your traffic, you want to measure how many people sign up for your lead magnet, you want to measure how many leads actually open your emails, they click your email, they book an appointment, they show up to the, to the call, they become a client, um, and they purchase again, right? All of these things you want to measure and you want to optimize step by step, but you want to start with the beginning, right? You need to have traffic in order to get leads. You need leads in order to get appointments. You need appointments in order to measure how many people show up for the call. You need sales calls uh, in order to have clients, right? And you need clients in order to have repeat purchases and referrals ultimately, right? So. What we are going to have a look at today is this point right here, right? So in between here, we are sending out emails to our list, right? So that's what we're going to focus on. Okay, so once the foundation is established, creators can engage in private transactions such as selling premium content services products through email, DMs and calls. So it's a smart way to get the best of both worlds, right? Getting noticed by a lot of people through traffic, right? Um, social media platforms and so on, and making money through more personal connections, right? So if I invite friends to my party, um, they're more likely to listen to me when I tell them to do something, to do an action, and that's basically selling, right? Um, change behavior. Um, then strangers or guests on my party, right? I don't really know them. Um, it's going to be hard to tell them to do anything, um, change any behavior. But even though it's my party, 
right? It's my social media account. Okay, so there's this one really interesting thing I came across, which is Google's 7-11-4 rule, right? But before we dive into that, we want to define success indicators. So you're sending out emails, right? How do you make sure that these emails are any good, right? How do you know that? Well, you need KPIs, indicators, key performance indicators, right? These are very broad, right? You need to figure them out for yourself. So you need to measure it over a period of time and then see how you can improve them, right? So anything in between 30 and 60% of open rates is okay-ish, right? Um, it's, it's, you're going to be well, right? Um, if, if you get a 40% open rate, I wouldn't focus too much on increasing your open rate anymore, right? Um, I would rather focus on increasing the click-through rate, which is the CTR, and should be in between 1.5 and 5%. And again, this is a very rule of thumb thing, right? Um, you need to have a look for yourself and decide on your own metrics what's the what the, what's the kpi to aim for right um, maybe for you it's even 10 percent, right um, so look out for those so google has this science-backed approach to marketing right they what it says is they figured out that um focusing on seven hours of content 11 touch point across four locations will dramatically increase the chances to have your audience member become a client, right? So that's that's Google's KPI for turning visitors into buyers. Seven hours on content, right? So this involves providing diverse content like blogs, videos, podcasts, social media interactions, reviews, um, etc. Right? Um, Eleven touch points. So these are different interactions between the brand and the consumer, such as ads, websites, emails, brochures product displays and each touch point shapes the consumer's view of the brand right so that's important for us because email is just one touch point it's one location and it's one way to make our audience consume co content right so um let's use it for locations um, brands need to present where consumers look for information this includes the brand's website social media offline places like stores events third party sites and influencer channels right so the idea is to build a comprehensive strategy that covers different types of content, interaction points, and locations to effectively engage and convince consumers, right? Um, so you need, you need to find your own strategy on how to reach these KPIs for each and every consumer, right? You want to make them consume seven hours of your content. You want to um, have at least 11 touch points with them. You want to have those touch points across four different location, locations with them because that builds trust. And you need trust in order to have the consumer buy anything from you, right? So by now, the goal should be clear. Increase the time of engagement with your content to an average of seven hours. And this sounds long, but it's just the way it is, right? Um, Google didn't make this up, they actually measured it, right? You want to create 11 touch points as soon as possible with your potential clients, right? And you want to, to spread those touch points across four different locations. Example, it's, it's like I'm doing it right now with you guys, right? So YouTube content, maybe your consumer is going to watch three and a half hours of your content on YouTube and this happens over four different videos, right? Easy. Email. Maybe your consumer is going to read one hour, spend one hour reading your emails and engaging with the content you link to, right? Across three different emails, maybe. Okay. LinkedIn content. Maybe they spend one hour over two touch points, ads, you retarget them, and they spend a half an hour on two different ads. Maybe it's some kind of video sales letter, which is usually usually longer. Right. And then you have a sales call, which is one hour across two calls. Right. Maybe um, a discovery call and then the um, closing closing call, basically, or onboarding call or whatever it is. Right. So this is altogether four locations, 12 touch points and seven hours of content, which in Google, Google's definition um, makes it highly probable to turn that consumer into a buyer, a client of yours. Right. So. But what's the problem? Well, what do I write? How do I make it 
a great experience for my subscribers and how do I make money with this, right? These are the questions we want to, we want to answer. And basically, this is, this is very basic stuff, but creating an exception, exceptional newsletter involves four, um, four different key elements, right? It needs to be engaging, right? Um, it needs to be relevant, informative and interesting for your audience. So if I have my audience interested in automations and AI and how to become a better marketer and entrepreneur, well, if I talk about basketball, like if I talk about Kobe Bryant and basketball and um, how the game yesterday with the LA Lakers went, it's not going to be very interesting. It's not going to be very relevant to my audience, right? Um, personalization. You want to tailor your newsletter to your audience, right? So you need to know what are their problems, what are their desires, what is, where, where are they? Uh, where are they in the, in the in their process, right? So you want to use data. If you have consumed any of my lead magnets, you know that I usually con um, collect two key information as a first step, right? Um, I get your first name and I get the email address. This is um, because I want to personalize every contact I have with you. So the human, um, the human's favorite word in the world is their own name, right? If you call me Marvin, that's my favorite word. I, I love to listen to it, right? And especially if you're someone I don't really know that well. If I call you by your first name, you are going to listen, most probably, right? Also, what I like to do is, um, if we're further down in the in the customer journey, right? Um, you're already a lead for me, and um, we're exchanging some emails. Maybe the fourth email is gonna have a question or a poll or a possibility to click a link, which would lead to me having more information about you, right? So let's say, for example, I send you an email about, about a beginner's automation I came across or I created um, for beginners only. And if you're interested and a beginner, click here, right? If you click that, well, I now know that you're definitely not advanced in automation and you're more interested in beginner stuff. So I'm gonna create maybe a tag on your account as a subscriber so i always know i can i can tailor the newsletter more to your needs right very basic stuff okay strong subject lines well if we look at the key performance indicators we've got the open rate we've got the ctr right so the open rate is basically depending on your subject line and your preheader right what's the preheader that's the part that's visible as a preview of your email and you can manipulate that as you wish, right? But just as important is the subject line. If it's not intriguing, if it's not interesting, if it's not personalized, I'm not going to open it, right? And if your, if your subscriber is not going to open your email, well, it's going to be hard for you to sell them anything, okay? So you need to optimize for that. Um, clear call to action. Well, that's obvious, but many people miss this point and simply send out emails without any CTA really. And you can do that, of course, to build a relationship and to provide value and stuff. But you really want to make sure that your email have a CTA at some point um, in order to convert people into clients, right? And you can only do that by changing their behavior, okay? So that's the CTR basically, right? If you make your email intriguing and valuable and informative and educational and maybe entertaining, right? Um, your reader is going to be inclined to click that link and that's going to increase your CTR, okay? Obviously, you need to make sure that your email doesn't end in spam. So get the technical stuff right too. All of that stuff. Um, if you don't know what this is, well, Google it and make sure you warm up your email, um, email address and stuff like that. Okay. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. Okay. So the solution, well, we want to steal like an artist, right? So I have this awesome visual right here. Um, it's from steal like an artist, um, the book by Austin Kleon. And I, I can recommend it. It's a very short read, um, very interesting, um, perspective. 
So instead of simply copying whatever other people are doing, what we want to do is we want to study what they're doing. We want to steal from as many as possible. We want to transform what they are doing and we want to remix what they are doing, right? And we don't have to do it all by ourselves because it sounds like a lot of work, right? We can actually use AI and the automation I showed you before and we'll show you in depth soon um, to help us with this, right? So what we need to do is we need to prepare a custom GPT. And if you don't know what a custom GPT is, um, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video about that. But basically, um, you can train your AI to do certain tasks for you, right? To do certain tasks better. You can write like a brief for them and you don't have to do it again and again and again, right? So let's say I have my um, ChatGPT assistant, right? Um, I tell it to learn everything about my business and my me as a person, right? Um, so... I'm Marvin, I am a cons consultant, I help service businesses um, streamline their processes and integrate AI and automation into their processes in order to save time and cut costs and, and so on, right? I explain everything to, to the custom GPT and I even can provide it with documents, right? So if I have like um, important information as a PDF or something or multiple PDFs or links or whatever it is, I can upload it to, to my assistant and anytime I have a question, it can actually go ahead and read the documents and answer based on the information provided, right? So this is, this is a game changer, okay? And you need to understand this in order to, well, you will be able to do a lot of things with this, okay? Um, I, I think many people still don't understand this. I j just had a workshop with a um, communications agency and they knew nothing about this. They d didn't even know this existed and um, they had no idea how to implement it. So if you're one of those persons who don't know how to build their own uh, key assistant, let me know in the comments or write me an email or whatever. I can help you out, okay? Maybe I create more content around this or um, we can jump on a call and I'll just show you. Okay, right. So we want to use that custom GPT to remix the best of your own, uh, remix the best offs for your own email, right? Requirements, well, you need an open AI account with a credit card for the API key. Um, then we will build the GPT assistant and you need a make, a a make account for, with a free tier, right? So you can click that link or the link in the description and just open up make. Um, I'm simply going over to make. So I'm going to provide you with the exact template so you don't have to build it by yourself, but this is it right? Very simple, very straightforward. Um, there's not much in here, but let's see what it actually does. So first we have a email, watch emails module here, right? And this is a trigger. If you don't know what a trigger is, I'm actually, by the way, I am actually building a course. So this might be interesting for you. I'm going to link it in the description. I'm building a course um, to show people, especially marketers and business owners and entrepreneurs, how to use AI and no-code tools to build powerful automations to save them time and cut costs and essentially become a no-code integrator, right? Because what I found is if you, if you start to stack your skills, right? Um, we've got the marketing skill, for example, we've got the certain business skills, email marketing and selling, um, copywriting, all that stuff, right? If we learn to stack it on top of no code and automations and AI, it becomes really powerful, right? If you, if you get the principles right and you can use no code to, to make it even more powerful, well, that's, that's very interesting. So I build a course around that with a community you can join. It's completely free. Um, just click the link in the description. I didn't even think of it when creating the video. So, um, but yeah, I think it makes sense for you guys to join that community. It's free and um, I'd love to have you in there, right? So join. However, let's start with the trigger. So basically what this is, it's just watching my inbox, okay? It's watching my inbox for new emails. And I filter those emails by email address. So if the sender is an email address um, of a marketing guru I subscribe to, 
um, we are going to use that data, right? The filters right here. In this case, it's, well, Charlie Morgan. Um, just as an example, Charlie, if you see this, sorry for stealing your emails, but they're awesome. Um, great job. Well, okay, so what happens next? I use a text parser and what this does is, um, well, usually in emails you have a lot of links and um, ChatGPT, well, costs money, right, um, to use their um, API. So I simply remove all the links because they're usually very long and this makes the email much shorter and more concise, right? And we don't, we don't need the email links. So this is a Regex. Um, snippet I use to just remove all the links. Very simple, you're gonna have it in the template anyway, so don't think too much about it. All right, so what happens next? We take that email without links and put it into our GPT assistant, right? So I've created my funnel hacker GPT, which runs on GPT-4, and I simply feed it with the email, right? So everything else is prepared within the GPT assistant. I don't have to reprompt anything, right? He knows exactly what to do. He knows how to do it. And he gives me back a rewritten version for my own business, right? So Morgan sends me that email trying to sell me something within his email funnel. I'm going to take that email, have it rewritten by my funnel hacker GPT, um, who knows exactly what my business is and what my office are and who, am, who I am and stuff like that, right? And it's going to rewrite that email for me, okay? Next, I am going to use a simple completion, right? Um, GPT 3.5. I've created this prompt and basically what this does, it's, it's, going to take the, it's going to take the rewritten email and suggest five different subject lines, right? Um, straightforward. So the result of both of these uh, modules is basically I have a rewritten email based on whatever the marketing guru sent me, right? And I have five suggestions for subject lines I can use. So what happens next? Um, well, I simply send it to a Google Sheet, right? I add a new row. I put in the actual subject. I put in the actual email by Morgan. And then I put in the subject line suggestions and the actual um, rewritten email with a date, right? Very simple stuff. Now, I've done this basically only for one email funnel so far. I want you to do this for, let's say, five or 10 or 15, how, how many ever you like, because the more you steal from, the better your own emails are going to be, right? So. If you have the best email funnels from your niche and you look at every, every welcome email they send out, right, and you remix all of them into one, it's probably going to be a, quite a good email, right? You just take the best from each email and put it into yours. So what's the result? Well, it looks like something like that. We have the email number, right, one, two, three, four. We have the date, we have the day, so I can actually even see how many um, emails he's sending per day. So you can see, okay, one, two, three, four, and then we skip the day, right? Four to six, and then we skip the day again. So the first four days, he sent out emails every day, and then he's starting to send out emails every second day. Here's the email, the, con um, the subject line, and now we get subject line suggestions, and my own email version, right? So this is very interesting. Let's see. Hey there, it's Marvin Aziz. Well, that's me. Uh, remember me, I'm the guy who helps service businesses like yours to get more done with less hassle. Great, I craft super smart systems to do the boring stuff for you using things like automation, AI, and this handy tool called CRM. So this is very on point. Um, he offers my 30 minute free audit, right? Um, He's even linking to my website and my landing page. And he's even um, um, incentivizing to reply to that email, which will in turn, um, well, decrease my, my spam rate and um, increase my reputation on email service, right? Um, so that's, that's another thing you want to make sure, right? You need replies for email service to um, identify you as quality email sender, basically. 
Okay. So yeah, um, and we've been rewriting each and every email he sent out so far. And now I already have seven, no, six emails rewritten for my own business. Now, imagine if you would do this for four different email funnels. You probably will start to see patterns, right? And this is what I want to get to with. I'm going to do this with at least five different email funnels and I want to see what other people are, are doing. I mean, you can sign up to these email um, newsletters anyway, but this way you have a perfect overview and you can actually, it doesn't have to end here, right? So what happens if we take this and we add another module and we say that, well, GPT-4, please, please analyze this email for patterns. What makes this email good or stand out? What could be improved, right? Stuff like that, very simple, but powerful because all of a sudden you, you can just add another column into your Google sheet and have a precise analysis by GPT over that email that's provided. Super powerful. Now you can actually go ahead and do more things, but we won't get into this, right? Um, let's stay here. Um, I'm gonna provide you with the exact template for, for this right here, so you don't have to build it from scratch. Um, you simply need your OpenAI account, you need um, the Make account. Um, I will link f to all of this in the description. And if you're interested in stuff like that, make sure to join the community. I really like, I'm going to launch today, Sunday, and I'm going to launch this on Tuesday. So with the course, and I'm actually going to continue building the course, right? So it's going to be a fundamentals course um, on, on simple automations um, using AI, but I'm going to continue building that course over time. And I'm looking for feedback. So I want to build it with the community. It's, it's going to be awesome, right? I, I can't wait. So join the community. I'll see you in the community on school, right? Okay, see you.